All right, guys, so today we're doing some videos on the 996. The 996 has a very extravagant cooling system, so I thought, well, while we're at this stage, when everything's apart, why not make a video showing all of the coolant lines? I don't think anybody's ever done that. A lot of you guys say, oh, I replaced all the coolant lines on my 996. I bet you didn't, because there is a lot of them. So let's get into it right now. We're gonna start from the bottom and work our way to the trunk engine bay cover, whatever you want to call it, and show you everything we can see from there. Okay, so let's go ahead and start here. We're at the driver's side radiator. We're gonna come in the back of here. So we have a hard line here, a hard line there. We also have a rubber line, as you can see right there, that goes to the top of the radiator. And this other rubber line that goes to the bottom of the radiator, right? So that's two. There's also a rubber line, a little rubber vent line that goes up here. So that's three. On the passenger side, it's the same way. Get the light around here. There you go. We got hard line, hard line, big rubber line, big rubber line, and there should be a line on top of here that goes to right there but it's not on there this very second because we're waiting on a different radiator. So there is that. Um, as we go on back here, so that's three on, so far we're at six. And here's the other one hanging down here, but this is, exclude this, right? So we're six all together. We have three more on this side. We have a rubber line that goes here, here, a little piece that goes in the middle. We've taken all the squeeze clamps off because they were breaking uh, and put all Hose clamps where you actually tighten them. So we have six, we have those that go down to here and they stop right here. You can see the clamp and then they go back to these hard pipes right here. So we have 12 lines just up here as of right now. It's six on each side. We're gonna go back here. I'm gonna zoom all the way out. Yes. We have the little Y junction, which is right here. So that's 13. And then all these are hard pipes all the way back to here. Then we have another one, which is 14. Another hose, which is 15, 16. Then they go back up into here like this and go about a foot and go back to rubber lines. And that goes all the way to the back of the car. Then we have another one which was this 15, 16, I don't remember. 17, I think, 18 for the heater core. Then we come back here and then this drags up and over to here, 19. This is a hard pipe, which we have to replace because this is not the updated one. So we're 19 hoses so far. We come all the way back here to this. This is our big junction pipe. This is actually the wrong one. That'd be replaced, so that's 20 hoses. We got one of the main hoses to go to the top. That's 21 hoses. The same hose. Well, let's stop at 21. Let's let the car down, I'll keep going. Then here is 22. Not in there yet, because we have to let the engine back down a little bit to go over here to this side. Over on this side, we have 23 coming from the uh, air, oil sep air oil separator. We have 24 coming from the air oil separator. We have 25. I believe this was coming back from the uh, uh, engine oil cooler. And we have, the hell is it at? 26. Goes to the back expansion tank. We have 27, which is right there. And if you're looking at replaceable pieces, I guess this nozzle will be the 28th piece. Now I'm trying to think, I think that's pretty much it. Um, how many of these have been replaced, you ask? All of them, every one of them. So that's a lot of lines, that's a lot of money. Uh, so when somebody tells me I replaced all the coolant lines on my 996, I bet you didn't. Um, 
so a couple things since this car had oil in the coolant everything that that touched that's rubber it degraded the rubber which also means the radiators this car only has two radiators so if you have a car with three radiators which is possible you're going to have a couple more hoses up front uh, the radiators are about a little over 200 bucks new we actually had to buy another one today um, the radiators there's different versions of them right so the original version was specific per side. Then they made it to where the vent lines were on every radiator in the same spot so you could use them on either side. They fortunately got the new bare radiators in. Ours did not have vent lines on top and the bottom so when we flipped it, the vent lines in the wrong place for the passenger side. So we tried to drill and tap it, it just wasn't happening. So a new radiator, here we go, right? So that puts about 600 bucks just in radiators. I think we probably have close to a thousand dollars of lines at this point in time. Um, you know, could you do it any cheaper? No, you can't. That was using all the URO lines. Now I don't mind using brands like URO on this because there's no push lock fittings on anything. It's just all clamp, right? And like I said previously in this video, when we started taking some of these, uh, clamps off or squeeze them they're breaking i don't know why that is but that told me right there all these need to go we cannot reuse any of the the band the squeeze style clamps uh so we did that and torqued everything accordingly on the clamp so it's not over tight but not under tight we're trying to make it so when everything's together for the first time there's no leaks and it takes a little extra care to get to that uh, so anything we do if it's questionable we can't do it because in the very end, the last thing you want is to overheat this car and have a nuclear meltdown with the engine and have to spend 10 or 15 grand for another engine. So we're trying to get her all to go right the first run. We're already running, idling. It runs perfect. We just haven't had a chance to actually drive it. And of course today, the first thing was load everything in the back of the Sequoia, all the tires, all the wheels, because tomorrow it gets new tires. There is two things keeping us from driving it. One was having all the cool and stuff done today. And two is having tires that are not going to blow out the first test run. But that's going to be it, guys. Hope this helps you guys out. Do I have all the part numbers for this? <laughs> Man, probably. But holy crap, what a mess. What the deal is, I wanted to, in closing, tell you guys this. All these hoses, the metal lines, the rubber lines, none of that stuff would be touching anything at all anywhere on the car because it'll rub right through it. There's a couple of these lines that are not in the plastic snap brackets all the way. We're waiting to get everything done, which we can now on the front. And we'll have to go over the whole car. If anything's rubbing and we can't fix it, we're gonna have to put a piece of foam or rubber or something in there. It had a few of those pieces from the factory in it and we'll just have to supervise everything. If any, the metal line, you would not think that it would rub through. It'll rub through in a matter of days, touching something else metal. So that's it guys, see you later.